<laughs> Hello, mate. It's so nice to have you on the show. Thanks for having us. Pleasure. I actually went to the cinema last night to watch your film, and it was the first time I'd been to the cinema since COVID. Do you know one of my favourite things about the, the cinema experience you forget? It's that lovely moment when a cinema is packed. Oh, yeah. And the trailers come on, and you, you hear that noise when the trailer's finished. You hear the crowd go, yeah, it looks all right. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, that really small little thing, or, oh, it's fucking shit, aren't you? <laughs> like, I really miss that kind of, like, that, the judgment, instant judgment. Do you find that terrifying as a director? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, the last time I went to see one of my films with the public... What is that like? Well, I think Shaun of the Dead was the last time I did it, and I went, like, three times in one weekend. And the first time was with Simon Pegg. We went on a Friday night to Camden. And by Sunday, I'd gone to see it in the afternoon with my brother at Ealing Broadway. And my brother was laughing so much, I said, I'm going to sit somewhere else. Because <laughs> <laughs> hearing you laugh is not very helpful. I went to, so I went to sit, to sit near some other people. So it's that thing, like, you know, even when you're watching it with only a few other people and it's like, you feel like it's a sort of, um, you know, it's like these kind of small triumphs. If, like, one person laughs at a joke, you, like, turn back to my brother, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we did it. <laughs> but it was... Because well, I saw the new film, which you talk about, it's Last Night in Soho. It's out on October the 29th. Um, and for those who haven't seen it, can you sort of explain the, uh, the story to us? Yeah, it's about uh, a young uh, girl from Cornwall who's going to London for the first time to go to fashion college, and she's obsessed with the 60s because she's grown up with her grandmother, and she's, say, like, she's psychically switched on. And so when she gets to London and she's staying in this kind of old bedsit, in her dreams, she starts to go back to the 60s, which seems like a sort of a glamorous, um, alluring um, adventure, and until it isn't. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's a terrific film, but it's really scary. And we watched it in this screen room where the sound was wired up. So there's a bit where she nearly gets hit by a cab. And I... Fuck it out! <laughs> and, and that is not a scary part of the film. <laughs> so there were kind of moments in it where I was just going, oh, there's so many hands. But it's relatable, cos we've all nearly been run over by a cab. Well, I was, <laughs> well, I was curious, because she comes from, from Cornwall, and obviously you're from the West Country. I was sort of interested, is, is any of it autobiographical? You know, coming from the country to, like, the big city is... You know, I, I feel like I still have imposter syndrome, to be honest. <laughs> I never... I mean, I feel when you first come to a big city, and London is obviously an amazing city, but when you first move here, it can be pretty unfriendly, and you feel like there's no way to kind of, like, what is my foothold in this place? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have enough money, like, sort of, you don't know anybody. You know, people who are even the same age as you who already live in a city are sort of seem so sort of far advanced. And, you know... Sometimes that feeling never goes away. Some people kind of, like, don't like it at all and, and move back. So that was a big part of it. And, and also, my, my mother is quite similar to Eloise, the main oh, really? character, in a way that she, like... I went to art college. She went to sort of art college and, and designed dresses like Eloise does in the film. And also, my mum, I would say, is quite supernaturally switched on as well. Like, not to make her sound like a crazy person, because I believe her, but, like, she's the kind of person who has seen two separate ghosts in our family house. What were the ghosts? Did she ever sort of it's elaborate? It's probably too bleak to go into on a funny show. One of them was, like, she saw a hanged man in the living room. Jesus! <laughs> but, but and what... she said that she saw... This is what she said. She, she retold me the story the other day after she watched the movie for the first time. Yeah. Because I guess a lot of these stories I'd sort of buried. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when she saw the movie, they all came spilling out. She goes, well, remember I saw the hanged man in the living room? And I said, oh, yeah, yeah. Me and my brother were both like, yes, of course. And she said that when she saw The Hanged Man, she said, oh, piss off. <laughs> and never saw it again. But which, is a very, which is a very kind of, a, you know, like a good way of being a Ghostbuster, is just yeah. being a ghost to piss off. <laughs> they don't do that in The Exorcist. Well, this is... <laughs> so there's lots of 60s legends kind of in the film. So you've got Terence Stamp, you've got Rita Tushingham, and you've got Dame Diana Rigg. Um, w was she able to watch the film? You know, it's Diana's last movie. She passed away, like, um, just over a year ago. And she never got to see it finished. But my final memory of her was very happy because she was on fine, fine form and as funny as ever. There was one thing that I... <laughs> just before I went down, like, her daughter had texted me saying, like, um, you know, be, be prepared, like, you know, she's, she's, she's lost a lot of weight and so, you know, don't... You know, you might be shocked by her appearance. And I said, oh, I totally understand. I said, if, if, if it's not good for us to come in, 
even if we're outside, just tell us and we can go away. And she goes, oh, no, no, she's excited to see you. She'll probably want to have a drink afterwards. <laughs> and I was like, oh, OK. So I knew she liked Campari. And so I said, well, shall I bring a bottle of Campari? She goes, oh, yeah, she'd love that. And then when I came in, I said, oh, you know, I called her Dame D. Dame Diana Rigg. I said, Dame D, I brought you a bottle of Campari. And she says, oh, darling, I'm having one right now. <laughs> So my final memory of her is her just in fine form, like such an amazing raconteur yeah. and just it was incredible. And um, when we were in the mix the next week, we needed like one more word. And it was literally the word well. And I said to the dialect, I said, oh, we must have her saying well somewhere else. And we didn't. So I knew that she'd been enjoying it because <laughs> Rachel, her daughter, had told me, said, oh, she's been dining out on the fact that she's... Everybody that she's talking to, because I guess she was talking to all of her friends, yeah. knowing that she might pass away soon. Yeah. And she told them all the same thing. She goes, don't think that I'm not working. I'm still doing this fucking film. <laughs> so that was, like, her running joke to all of her friends. So knowing that, I said, hey, do you think she would record one more word? And Guy Garvey, who's her son-in-law, like, he, he recorded it. He recorded the last word. And then, like, I got a call from him saying, oh, I'm putting Diana on. And Diana sort of said, oh, I, we just did the last word. She goes, I had such a great time working with you on this film. And I felt this thing, I don't know if you've had this, where somebody is saying goodbye, mm. but how do, you, how do you say goodbye? How do you, like, reply? I didn't want to reply in any final way. So when she said that, I said, um, I just wanted to leave it open-ended. So I said, uh, oh, I, I can't wait for you to see the finished movie. And she just said, I wish you all the best with it. And then the line went dead. And I was, and then, and then, <laughs> I'm starting to tear up right now. But, um... Yeah, sorry. I don't have to apologise, but it, it must be such a... <laughs> it don't clap my tears. <laughs> so, so what's it like shooting a film in Soho? It looks so hectic. Is it, is it tricky? Is it easy? Um, and I knew I wanted to make it in Soho and not fake it somewhere else, but, you know, it's one of the few areas of the city, indeed, maybe the country, that's genuinely 24-7. So there was, like, some 60s scenes. There's some scenes with Anya Taylor-Joy and Matt Smith where we redressed parts of Soho, like Frith Street. And this was before Anya had really exploded, as she has now. But Matt is like Doctor Who, which is almost a bit like being a former prime minister or something. It's like, oh, my God, <laughs> it's Doctor Who. So whilst we were shooting this 60s scene, around the corner, we were also shooting a modern scene with the girls going on a night out with a steady cam hidden in a rickshaw. So we were shooting, eventually, <laughs> like, shooting the girls walking up Old Compton Street again and again with this hidden camera, whilst everybody else is kind of, like, gawking at Anya and Matt yeah. shooting the 60s stuff. But it's, it's not easy to do, but, like, there's times when you <laughs> come to set and you think, I'm not sure we're going to pull this off today. You know, you don't share that with the rest of the crew, but then... But it didn't feels you... like when you finally get the take, it's like, oh, I can't believe we actually pulled that off. But didn't you have, like, trouble with, like, extras when you were doing Shaun of the Dead? Yeah. Um, so it was, like, 17 years ago, so I was relatively young looking then. And I think there was... A, we had a lot of uh, zombie extras outside the, the Winchester pub location, which was actually in New Cross. The unit list said, do not wear any football colours other than Millwall. I've never seen that printed on the top of a yeah. unit list before. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, and it was deadly serious. Yeah, yeah. So we were in it, like, outside of Pub and New Cross, and there was one, like... There were a lot of extras there, and there was one, like, guy that was in his 70s, uh, an extra that was, you know, particularly like, amazing-looking. And he came up to me thinking that I was a runner on the movie, and he looked at the set, and he turned to me, and he goes, Ooh, straight to video for this one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And how, how do you... What, did you say anything, or did... did I just, uh, like, the polite man, I went, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't say, I'm the fucking director yeah. of sack. <laughs> I couldn't sack him because his face was too good. He had really good cheekbones. He was, like, one of the best zombies of the day. <laughs> but... <laughs> what a... That was such a wonderful sentence you just said, Edgar. But... You've got you to have a good bone structure to if, be a good zombie. If you're a zombie... <laughs> it's true. I would sack you if you weren't so genetically perfect. <laughs> One absolute treat. Ladies and gentlemen, the wonderful Edgar Wright! Thank you.